Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Welcome to this Monday morning. God is real. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We welcome you to the program today. We're studying Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. We're about done with this great book of Ephesians. We'll be done Monday, this coming Monday. We'll be done. Those of you who have successfully completed your quizzes all along will receive a nice certificate of completion well deserved because this has been a long study but a great one verse by verse in the book of ephesians so we're going to jump right in here don't go away we'll be right back stay with us hallelujah welcome to today's edition of god is real Brought to you by Faith International Christian Center in Bradenton, Florida, United States of America. We invite you to study the word of faith with us for undeniable proof of his name Israel. Because God is real. Yes, he is. We're Praise back. the Lord. God, God is, is real. very, very he real. Is real. Hallelujah. Well, bless you, saints. We appreciate you joining with us today, being a part of God is Real, as always. Mm -hmm. And uh, we look forward to today's lesson together. We always encourage your comments and questions. Uh, that's what the program is all about, is interaction together, sharing the scriptures together, and uh, answering the questions. Hallelujah. Let's look at our verse for today, or beginning verse, anyway. Okay. Ephesians 6 2, honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Honor your father and mother, mm -hmm. which is the first commandment with promise. We're going to look at what that means and what it does for you mm -hmm. when you do that. Hallelujah. So stay with us. We'll get into detail with that here pretty soon. Who do we have on board with us, Arlen? We have two for Christ, the Charlene and Brother Cliff. Good morning. Hello to the Townsleys. Yes, good morning. Uh, Dorothy Vicente, good morning. And Kelly, hey, good morning. Up early. early. Yes. Also, Edie Kennedy, good morning. Hey, Always Edie. on the program for very early. We love you too, Edie. In the morning. Good morning. And also, we have Mr. Rhonda Jackson. Good morning. Rhonda. Happy Monday. Hey, Rhonda. My family of faith. Amen. Amy Herna also in the Philippines. Good afternoon. Hey, Amy. And Sister Sandra, good morning. And the Miles watching from the website or maybe from Roku TV. Good morning, uh, Judy and, and uh, Brother Duke. Good morning. Amen. Yes. I see Judy, but I don't see Duke. Well, He's probably coming along. Yeah, yeah. And Jordan. And Jordan, good morning. Good morning. Sandra, do we get Sandra there? Mm -hmm. Yes. Good morning. Thanks for joining. Up in Ohio. Thank you for sharing also. Uh, yes, that sir. is real because. Yes, yeah, Sandra's really faithful. Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday was the first day of fall, I understand. Is it? Yeah, that's what I understand. The first day of fall. Mm -hmm. It didn't seem like it here in Florida. Mm -hmm. There was no difference in the weather. Maybe some of you up north there, like Sandra in Ohio, are you noticing the leaves changing or anything different here now uh, it is the end of september so mm -hmm. interesting hello to the millers wyoming oh wow oh, they're yes. covering some Good morning, territory sam and, sister and sam notices the difference it's 46 degrees 46. There. wow that's cold <laughs> and it's only september oh my goodness but wow. I, have you heard sam saying like okay we're here in and it's uh 90, 90 degrees. I've never, seen, I've never uh, seen like that from the Millers. Only when they're in Florida. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Adrian. Right. Hey, Adrian in Montana. Yeah. What's your weather like up there, Adrian? It's uh, first day of fall was yesterday. So I'm just curious if you're, anybody's seeing any changes. He said 67 in 67. Athens. 67. Well, that's chilly. Yeah, yeah. that is. That is That's cool. getting there. That's cool. Therefore, ours is what? Uh, I don't know what ours is today. That's You'll have sure. to look it up. Yeah. I'm going to imagine in the 80s. Mm. 
and going into the 90s for sure. So I pray that everyone went to church yesterday. Did you go to church somewhere? Everybody that went to church somewhere yesterday, type in yes or the name of your church or yeah. something to let us know you went yes, to church. Yes, went to church yesterday. Now I realize some of you are unable to for various reasons, so don't let the devil condemn you or say, oh, I wish you wouldn't say that. No, maybe you went online. Type in online, whatever you did, whatever you're able to do. If you went to church somewhere, you had, you know, church, then let us know. Praise God. Rhonda said it's 65 and raining wow. there. Adrian, 53. 53. Ooh, that's getting chilly. I've never been to Montana. Mm. I've never been up in that neck of the woods. Makes me wonder so while we're here. Who's yeah. 75. We're 75 here? Okay. I've been to California, but that's it. Okay, Edie went to Virtual Life Church of Madison. Okay, good. Good, Edie. Good job. Praise the Lord. Sandra, online. Online. Went online. Okay. Praise God. Charlene, our fall is a freezing 75 in Polk County. Freezing 75. <laughs> same here. Same. Yeah, we got the same. Usually it's a degree or two difference, but no, not today. Well, thanks for sharing that, you guys. It's important to attend somewhere, to be fed, and to be a blessing to others. So uh, thank God you were able to go and be a part. So we're looking today at Ephesians. Our initial uh, scripture I put up here, which generally describes the what we're going to talk about today, is to honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment that was given with a promise attached to it. Mm. Hallelujah. So uh, we're going to see that and kind of describe it in more detail. So let's read it in context here, Arlen. Six, Ephesians 6, 1 through 4. Okay. Um, obey, uh, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, uh, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition, admonition of the Lord. All right, so... This is instruction. We talked about the wives. We talked about the husbands. And now we're talking about the children. And it is an exhortation to the children to obey your parents in the Lord. And to honor your father and mother. Of which it comes with a promise of long life and yes. well-being on planet Earth. So that's really good, kids. Um, so we're going to discuss that in greater detail today, so stay with us. Let's see what uh, Georgia has to say about it, and then we'll jump in. Okay. okay. I believe this is a very important commandment. If you don't respect your parents, you won't respect your elders growing up. Children will test the waters as they are growing up, but by loving their parents, they won't be two-way um, out of line. I believe if you don't have control over a child at the age of two, then you will be dealing with rebellion later in their Absolutely. life. Absolutely. My kids never talked back to me, and they were disciplined as they were growing up. All kids are different. Yeah. All I had to do was clear my throat, and my daughter got the message. Now my son, on the other hand, had I used that technique, I would have lost my voice. <laughs> Uh, God has reasons we are to take take heed to what he commanded us to do. If you really look at the Ten Commandments, you will see a love letter to us. Because if you disobey any of them, there are consequences to that. So obey them and stay out of the consequences because they are good. They are, they good. are not good. All right. The promises are good. Mm -hmm. The consequences, the consequences are, are not good. So... You know, I, I, in raising my boys, I have many, many, I look back and I have many regrets. Um, because you're young, you've never had kids before, 
and uh, it's a learning process for the parents. And I can tell you, as a parent, that there are a lot of things I would go back and redo and do different. And thank God my kids forgive me because there were times that these uh, promises we're going to talk about here, these instructions, possibly I stretched the, the limit on them. Not meaning to. I meant well. So I think this is good instruction for all of us. And in today's society, it's so taught. The propaganda is to let the kid do whatever. And that's love. Well, that's not love. Yeah. That's loving yourself so you don't have a, you know, a, a confrontation. Uh, but it's not godly love. Godly love disciplines and corrects and trains the child in godliness. Hallelujah. Not in wrath, not in anger. So, um, we'll look at this closer today. It's pretty interesting. Let's... Uh, Start here with Ephesians 6 1, are we? Okay. What's this? Uh, oh, I got to put it on the board. Yeah, huh? I think so. That would help. <laughs> Ephesians 6 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Children, mm -hmm. speaking to you, obey your parents in the Lord. Now, this doesn't say. That children are children to the age of 12, 10, mm -hmm. 15, 18. My dad lives with me. I help take care of him. He's 96 years old. And I'm still one of his children. And I still respect and obey my dad. Because he's my dad. He'll always be my dad. And I love him immensely. And Dorothy, my sister, is the same age of mine. She's mm -hmm. the same way. Mm -hmm. Dad is always the dad. So it's not just talking to three-year-olds or five-year-olds here. It's talking to all of us. While our parents are still alive on the earth, we are to obey our parents, mm -hmm. reverence them, love them, yeah. give them the proper place that God has given them. We would not be here if it weren't for them. So we definitely owe them. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So, it says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Hello to Esther. You did not miss anything, Esther. Hallelujah. You good are here morning. with us right on time. Good morning. Yes, good morning. And hello to Bailey there. Bailey also, good morning. Hey, Bailey. What's happening with Bailey? Good day, church. Let us be church today for this new, uh, new glorious day God made for us to do justice, to spread his hope for the lost and dying world, shine on his perfection as his reflections and then give all the glory to God for what is what he's continuously doing for the good name's sake of Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay, so what does Edie say here? Age doesn't matter. Respect and obedience to our parents. Absolutely, Edie. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say children defined as ages one to four. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Says children, I'm always dad's child, yeah. always will be. And uh, when he goes to heaven, if he goes before the rapture, which I don't think he will, but should that occur, or like with my mom who went when she was 68, I, I'm still her child, but she's in heaven, so I'm on my own in that regard. But no, dad, he's still here, and I still respect him yes. and honor him. Yeah. And uh, we might have conversations that you know arguments so to speak back and forth on what we believe is right or wrong but yet when it comes down to it my dad is my dad and he'll always be my dad yes amen. hello to Vanya and to Priscilla in India God bless you. praise God all right so children we are to obey our parents in the Lord and we have to go back. Last week we studied on wives' submission to your husband. Mm -hmm. It also stated in the Lord. And we talked about that it's not saying that you're to 
obey to do wrong mm. just because they have that authority. Uh, this is really important. I, you know, in America here, I don't know. Maybe they have, you know, parents that I'm sure they do have parents that abuse the child with using them for financial gain or something. But in some of the third world countries that I've been to, they actually use the child for thievery and for uh, malicious, nefarious things mm -hmm. that the child could more easily get by with and the parent walking in there doing it. So uh, children are to obey the parents in the Lord, mm -hmm. not in criminal activities. Yeah. So I just want to make that clear. I'm not going to dwell on that. I just want to make, it'd be hard for a child, say five, six, seven, eight years old. Mm. If they're taught to do that, to know anything different, that's the sad part about it. Yeah. But when they become age enough to know right from wrong, then they need to, you know, realize this is not, not right. I can't do it. Mm. Hallelujah. So I'm talking about in the Lord. It says it right there in the Lord. You see it right there mm. in the Lord. It's talking about, we're talking to Christians, number one, not to the world. And we're talking about to godly people, raising godly kids mm -hmm. and kids growing up in a godly fashion. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so we want to want to make sure you understand that. Also, it says, for this is right. Well, if God tells you something is right, then you need to understand that to God... It's right, and there's no argument, mm -hmm. and there's no uh, uh, counsel against it. There's no excuse. There's no reasoning that would fight against it. If it's right in God's eyes, you can take it to the bank. It is right, mm -hmm. and it's right for your good. Hallelujah. There's a blessing. Yeah. There's a blessing there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. Right. yes. It's not, it, it, you know, again, society, psychologists, psychiatrists come up with all these books about how not to spank kids, how not to uh, tell them no, how not to discipline them in public, you know, and like when you go in the store and they pitch a little fit, just let them have their little fit. These things are so ungodly and so wrong. They're from the world. They're not from the church. Mm -hmm. And so we know better. We know what's right because God is right mm -hmm. and he cannot be wrong. So when we obey God, who is by our spiritual parent, our father, when we obey him, then we do right. Hallelujah. Praise God. And by the way, it's easier for a child that has been taught obedience discipline to obey God the Father than for somebody who's just run amok all their life and never had any correction, never had any, um, you know, anybody uh, say no to them. I forgot which prophet it was that, and it's just kind of coming back to me. Maybe you can type it in, some of you who know. Um, there was a, a prophet that God corrected and said, you never told your son no. Um, and that's why they're that way. The priest. Sorry. Was it Sam? It wasn't Samuel. Eli? Yeah. I don't remember. Priest, Maybe one of you know. Priest, you know. Anyway, he said, well, you never told your son no. You never corrected him. You never disciplined him. And it was, it, it, it caused big problems. It was Eli. And, uh, somebody. So anyway, that's interesting. So children. Yeah. It's not a crime to be told to obey, mm -hmm. to be punished for disobedience. Yeah. You know, I remember when we had a thrift store, yeah. a church thrift store before, and uh, we met kids. Maybe they were like, uh, I don't know if it's teenagers or young, uh, early 20s, maybe. They're young. They were young, yeah. beautiful and handsome kids. And um, I asked them where they live, and, uh, and they live just in the street, anywhere. And I said, of course, they were your parents. Now, now they're here, but uh, they don't go home just because her and the 
mama or the parents, they don't get along. Mm -hmm. the, I said, no, you need to go home because you, you are more safer in your with right. your mom than right. outside of your home, outside of your mom. You're young and you're so beautiful and there are so many uh, dangerous outside. Very, very much so. Yeah, so you need to go home. It's amazing. That's in America too. That was humor, isn't it? Yeah. And so, you know, parents, parents and kids, you will have some, like you said, arguments, but your 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 respect and your love should always be there. Did you ever argue with your mom? I did, and I have I have to. I, I, I hope mom's I, watching. <laughs> I have to go. <laughs> I I have to get out of the way and then come back when she's not anymore with hot uh, hot face or what do you call that? Angry, <laughs> angry face. <laughs> Praise yeah. God. So Charlene said it was Eli. And um, we also yeah. have with us here Dora. She's joined us. Dora. Hey, Dora. Yes. Hello. Hello. Thank you for joining. Praise God. She's from Bulaca. Bulaca. She got a little store there too, didn't she? Yeah. She's selling something. So if you're in that area, go visit with her and get some of her goods there. Mm -hmm. Richard and Pearly, they're in the Philippines. In Bye Bye Lady Philippines. Oh, Richard missed the the in you know the cool the cool the cool the cool fall. yeah the he cool season it. the cool season <laughs> yeah esther pray for joshua he needs to finish his college mm. we agree with you right now that yes. he'll finish it in he'll Jesus be name. Uh, thank you lord no problem with his studies yes no yes. problem with the money to finish it thank you lord we thank you lord you get him through and getting him a diploma, yes, a thank degree you, in the, name in the field that he's chosen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name Lord. Amen. 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 Uh, so, okay, so, all right. So, children, that's all of us. Mm -hmm. We got to obey our parents in the Lord. In the Lord. And this is God's righteousness. It's God's right. It's doing right in God's eyes. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's very important. So let's read it out of the Amplified here. What's it say? Okay. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. That is, accept their guidance and discipline as his representatives. For this is right. For obedience teaches wisdom and self-discipline. So that puts it very well. Mm -hmm. Obey your parents in the Lord. Accept their guidance and discipline because they're his representatives. They're mm -hmm. telling you things to keep you out of trouble to keep you from harming yourself yeah it may look like it's restraining or restricting you but it's actually for your good and this is right yeah. it says for obedience teaches wisdom and self-discipline mm -hmm. and yes it does and even the church has gotten away from obedience we must obey god our mm -hmm. father we must obey our father mm. hallelujah if we're going to know him if we're going to live right then it is required ephesians 6 2 Arlen. okay honor thy father and mother which is the first commandment with promise so this is the first commandment with a promise hallelujah so what does that mean it means that if you'll do it then the promise will be fulfilled, will be granted. So we'll read the promise here shortly, but what he's saying here is, if we honor our father and mother, then there's a promise attached to it that we'll receive. So what is that? It's taken from Exodus 20, in the uh, when he gave the Ten Commandments. Verse 12, read it, please. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days... May be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So, so you'll live long, mm -hmm. that your days may be long upon the land. Yeah. So, if you honor your father, and mother, obey them, respect them, give them the place that they are supposed to have, then God will give you long life mm -hmm. on earth. Hallelujah. And this is important because 
many people die prematurely. And they, maybe others wonder why. Why were they removed at an early age? Mm -hmm. Well, this could be one of the keys. It's not all inclusive, mm -hmm. but certainly is one element here that's boldly broadcast. Mm -hmm. That if you honor father and mother, you'll have a long life. But guess what? If you dishonor them, mm -hmm. you'll get the opposite. You will not have a long life. Yeah. So you, you need to understand the promise is the promise of long life. If you honor father and mother, if you obey, if you respect them. Here, read it again, Ephesians 6. To yes, honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Hallelujah. So, honor your father and mother. It's the first commandment with promise. The promise being that your days would be long mm -hmm. on the earth. Ephesians 6 30. Okay. That it may be well with thee and thou mayest live long on the earth. So Paul even opened it up more. The Holy Spirit did to us. That it may be well with you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. That it may be well with you. So not only is it a long life that you get, but it will be well during those length of days. This is the promise that's promised in this commandment, the first with a promise attached to it. Honor your father and mother, and you'll have nice, prosperous, peaceful, blessed days for a long life on earth glory to god that's great isn't it i like that what's your name say? growing up i've been taught children obey your parents i was taught it was a small child then as an adult you would honor them how could a small child obey and honor their parents if they don't understand well kids are born with a little rebellious streak in them it's mm -hmm. called sin <laughs> And uh, they, uh, you know, different kids have different personalities. We, we had a, a, a great niece, I guess she was. And she's gone on to heaven at an early age. Mm -hmm. But she had a very strong personality. And we would tell her when we kept her for Robin for a season. Yeah. My dad was having some issues. We would tell her, do this or do that. And she'd look at you right in the face. No. I'm talking, how old was she? Three? She was three. Yeah. Three years old. She looked at us right in the face. No. No. <laughs> no. I'm not. So. But she was very cute, so it was funny. She was beautiful. <laughs> and it was funny, kind of, but it's not funny because you can't let them get by with that. Now, her sister was not that way. Her yeah. sister would do it. Now she yeah. might be a little sneakier and sneak around with it, but but she didn't just point blank say no. <laughs> but little Renee did. Yeah, yeah. So you have different personalities. Uh, you know, every one of us created different, but uh, they even at three years old they understood enough to say make a choice whether they wanted to obey or not. So it's there, and disobedience is equally there in the sense that there's a strict rebellion because of sin, we're born in sin. Yeah. So, for uh, something that is not good for them, you just have to be firm, right? Yeah. 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 Because kids can be like Renee, you know, no Renee, and yes. <laughs> your yeah. no is yes to her, and your yes is no to her. Some of them have really strong wills. So, uh, you know, we, we just have to deal with it as parents and wisdom and in love. Yeah. But uh, but they know. I mean, they understand, even though they're young. Now, I'm talking like an infant baby. Even an infant baby can exercise their will with crying and <laughs> pinching fits that you would not think capable of an infant. But they they do know. Yeah. And uh, they so know already what they like. They already they know. know. So it, it, it's not as pronounced as when they get older. 
So from the beginning, you have to, you know, teach them in love. Now in love, you have to teach them. Yeah. Hello to Brother T there and Sister T. Yes. Good hey, morning. Good morning, Scott Brother. Scott Tierney, so far. So is that what you're talking about, Charlene? I hope that. And Sister T. Good morning. Answers that. So the the thing here is that God is saying. Honor your parents, and you'll live well and a long life. That's the promise. So, if you believe the promise, you'll do it. You'll you'll honor your parents in order to have a good life and a long life. But if you just explain it away and excuse it away with psychology, psychiatry, and other garbage in there, then you make excuses for it and treat them however you want. Which is not good. All right, let's continue on. 6 4. Question 6 4. And dear fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, to bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So, again, back to the dads, fathers, husbands. Don't provoke them to wrath. <coughs> That's where I'm talking about whenever I was a. Uh, raising my kids um, I had some anger issues and I would get angry with them and correct them sometimes in anger and that's wrong that produced rebellion and my boys are not rebellious to me They're, they respect me and uh, they love me and I love them but uh, there were times that I pushed that to the limit not intentionally so um, this is an instruction to us as parents, as to fathers, to earn the respect and the honor that are rightfully ours by not provoking these kids to wrath. Don't over discipline. Don't over micro every step they take, everything they do. Bring them up by training them in the Word of God, by example, by them seeing you praying, them seeing you reading your Bible them seeing you do godly things when the temptation would be to maybe schmooze a little in order to gain something. By them watching that, because they're just imitations of you, by them seeing your godly lifestyle is the greatest effect you can have. Don't provoke them to anger because uh, it produces rebellion. Colossians 3.21 says a similar thing. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Lest they be discouraged. Mm -hmm. If they think they can never please you, and that you're a problem, they're a problem to you, then it discourages them. Mm -hmm. It's very sad. There's yeah. uh, all kinds of issues out there that we could go into in this, but we're, we're not. We're just covering this. Mm -hmm. Here it is in the New Life versions. Okay, fathers, do not be too hard on your children so they will become angry. Teach them in growing years with Christian teaching. Teach them with the Bible, mm -hmm. with living the right life, being a uh, example. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Now, mm -hmm. if you've made mistakes or if you're making mistakes, God can fix that because he's God. Mm -hmm. And as long as your heart is desirous of doing right, He'll fix your, you know, your your lack of knowledge or your weaknesses mm -hmm. that maybe you succumb to. I can speak firsthand for that. And uh, so we thank God for that. So don't fall under condemnation. Mm -hmm. uh, just keep your heart tender. Lord, whatever you tell me to do, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do my best by the power of the Holy Spirit to be a good day to train my kids properly but for the kids that experiences like this hard parents hard to them uh how what can you advise for those kids well depending upon the age of the children if they're old enough they need to seek god for god to change the parents and he will and to protect them uh, but you still, you have to obey your parents. Mm -hmm. 
not to criminal things or uh, you know abuse and that kind of thing but you do have to to honor them they're yeah. still even though they may not be right they're still your parent mm -hmm. and you have to give them that respect you like it or not you have to exercise a lot of forgiveness yeah a lot of forgiveness and love faith in god to change the situation mm -hmm. and hope that it will be changed according to the scriptures mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Kids will mimic what they see and hear from their parents. The little spitting images of what they watch their parents do. Mm. And they tell on us sometimes. Hallelujah. They live how the parents live. Yeah. Now, when they get older, they start making decisions. When they go to college and stuff, other people start pouring into their life. Then they they can make decisions and and. You know, go away for a little while, but they'll come back. Mm -hmm. God said they'll come back. Mm -hmm. If you are under your under um, under your parents, living with your parents, um, you, yeah, you really have to submit and just do what they want you to do because they are your parents. That's how you love and uh, respect them, right? Mm -hmm. In obedience, even when you don't feel like doing it. They're still your parents, you you gotta do it, or there will be no peace. And God will make up the, the difference. Mm -hmm. And if you. it's if it's right, the more you you want to do it, even if you don't feel it. That's right. And that's that's all. Part, that's a part of Christianity is not taught today, Arlen, mm -hmm. is that we suffer to do the will of God. In other words, we don't feel it. It may be dangerous. Mm -hmm. It may be uncomfortable right. but if God says to do it then we're to do it our yeah. father says to do it we're to do it and trust him because yeah. he knows best mm -hmm. and so we suffer through those physical circumstances to accomplish his will and uh, the, the message today is I feel good do good have fun mm -hmm. Let's, everything is great yeah but sometimes there's suffering involved mm -hmm. in that Suffering means not physical harm, but uh, being in positions that's not comfortable for you to do the will of God. But you still do it because he's your father. If you can't obey your earthly parents, you won't obey your, your one you can't see, your heavenly father. You've got to learn to do that. You've got to do it. It's not optional. Mm, Hope that yeah, helps. Yeah. Praise God. We love you. We're out of time. We'll be back again tomorrow, though. Yes, thank you so much, and we'll see you again tomorrow at the same time, 5.30 in the morning. Absolutely. Thanks for being a part of God is Real. Bye-bye. You have been watching God is Real, airing weekdays Monday through Friday at 5.30 a.m. with Pastors Chuck and Arlen Kennedy. Brought to you by Faith International Christian Center in Bradenton, Florida. If you would like to reach out to us, our phone number is 941-447-4538. Thank you so much and God bless.